Brother, we're not the Christian church. We're not out here to get numbers. We are here to save souls. It's not about numbers. It's about real men of God. I'm going to show you what the Most High told us to do on the Sabbath. Give me Luke 14 and 20. What you're doing right now is what the Most High commands each and every black, Hispanic, and Native American man to do. We are out here raising up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Which are you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans? Read that. No, we're the propitiation of our sin. And he is. Jesus Christ is the propitiation of our sin. That's right. Bring it up. So that's that's the kind of nonsense we're talking about. Of God. The what? Oracles of God. This Bible was only given to the children of Israel. That's right. It was not given to any African. It was not given to any Egyptian. Give me Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Because according to the Bible, we are at the bottom of society because we do not keep God's laws, statutes, and commands. That's right. It's high time that we wake up out of sleep. Neither keep they the king's law. And they don't even keep the king's law. Because guess what? Just because the so-called white man says Sunday is the Sabbath, we say no, that's not true. The Sabbath is on Saturday and we're going to keep it on Saturday. That's All right. right. And we're going to write up a written document saying I'm not working on the Sabbath. Because we're different from everybody else. We're not going to do what everybody else does. We're not going to sing and dance like the white man has told us to do over 400 years. Stop killing our brothers. Alright? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Is a curse a good or a bad thing, bro? It could be both. Explain. Alright, so most times it's known as what? Most times, right? So my question to you, it just said, curses shall come upon thee, right? What nation of people is the book of Deuteronomy talking to? Who we've been talking about this whole time? Israel, right? So the book of Deuteronomy is focused on one nation of people. I want you to read that again, officer. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if the Israelites would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. All his what? All his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses shall come upon the children of Israel and overtake them. Jump straight to uh, 68. Alright, because I want to make this vivid in your mind and clear. Alright, let me ask you a question. How did our forefathers get to this side of the earth? How did we, did we, did we walk over here to America? Did we catch a cab? Underground Railroad? That's, so we, so from the west coast of Africa, we took a uh, underground railroad to America? That's how we got over here? That's how we got over here. I'm talking about how do we get here? How do we get over here? Did we take a taxi, catch a flight? You don't know? All right. Hey, give me Hosea 4-6. I'm going to show you today. All right. And that's, that's not by coincidence because I'm starting to see as the generations come up, right, nobody knows about slavery no more. Nobody knows that little bit of history. Because how old you? About 19, 19, right? So, yeah, you, you're like whole generation after me. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to see that my people, they're no longer being taught the little bit about slavery that we was taught. Right. All right, listen to this. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It does not say everybody. You have to understand that this Bible was written for the Israelites. Right? So it says what? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it says my people, the Israelites, they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So if you want to, you know how you see these people keep walking past, right? So if they want to reject the truth of this Bible, the Most High God is going to reject them too. That's right. But you decided to listen to this Bible, right? Read. 
that thou shalt be no priest to me. See, thou hast forgotten the law of thy Forgot, God. Forgotten what? See, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. That's the knowledge. Forgotten the law of our God. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Forgotten the law. How do we forget the law? Don't forget what we just read. Psalms, right? It said the other nations came together to conspire against the Israelites, right? And then in that scripture, it said we have forgotten the law. How do we forget it? Give me that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. Right on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemy. To serve who? To serve thine enemy. No, Becky, Bobby, and Cindy. Read it again. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemy in the land which thou knowest not. Because when we was in Israel, we didn't know nothing about no America. You got to understand that. It said we will serve our enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Think about Christopher Columbus, right? When they quote unquote discovered America, what was it referred to? Let me see if you know that. They called this place what? Yeah, specific name. You wouldn't know? Hey, bro, you remember when Christopher Columbus so-called found America? Do you remember that? What did they refer to this land as? Do you know? The New World. You remember that? They said that this is the New World, right? Read this scripture again for me. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Because nobody knew about America. Because it wasn't, the, nobody was over here yet. You understand that, right? All right. All right, so let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68, right? So I'm going to show you, thus save the Lord, how we got over here. So if you haven't figured it out, we came over here on slave ships. That's how we got over here. We didn't walk over here. We didn't take a flight. We didn't catch a cab. No underground. No, we got over here. We were sold as slaves. Right. The Africans sold us to the white man, right? And we are his slaves over here. That's how we got here. Right. Now we're going to read it in the Bible, though. Okay? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. All right, so it says God did it, right? It wasn't them. The most High God just allowed them to do it. So it says God shall do what? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. All right, show the brother what Egypt means according to the Bible. So let me see what you know about biblical history. So the Israelites, do you remember when they were in Egypt? Somewhat, somewhat. You familiar with Moses? All right. What is Moses famous for? What else? Think about it. Just think about it. What else? Very, fam very famous. What is he famous for? Two things that he's most famous for. No. It's all right. He's famous for the Ten Commandments, right? Remember that? And he's famous for, I'm going to try to act it out. He stuck his rod in the ground and, the, and parted what? What did he part? The Red Sea. Remember, he parted the Red Sea and the children of Israel walked through. And then the Most High God allowed the water to fall on the Egyptians. You never heard that story? I don't remember that story, but I probably did. Okay, that's what Moses is familiar for. Alright, so, after saying that, why would Moses need to part the Red Sea for the Israelites to go through? Because they were slaves in Egypt, right? That's why he had to do it. So the Israelites, they cried out to the Most High God, right? And the Most High God finally delivered them. And this, this is proof right here. Give me that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Uh-huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Read it one more time. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So when you hear the word Egypt, right? When he's speaking that to the Israelites, they're like, Egypt means slavery, because they were slaves in Egypt, right? The, the, uh, the original name for Egypt is Mizraim. It's called Egypt, it's Greek for bondage or slavery. That's what it's, that's why it's referred to as Egypt. Read it again. We have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. So let's go back 
to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Most High God will bring our ancestors into slavery again. But this time, how would he do it? With ships. With what? With ships. Now take a look at this, brother. Did that happen to us? That did happen to us, right? Didn't we just read about that in the Bible? What other nation went into slavery on slave ships? What other nation? Who else? Give me verse 46. Think about it. It's hard to think of one, right? Because it didn't happen to anybody else except us. That's right. That's why. Give me for verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 46. Uh-huh. And they shall be upon thee for a son. So, brother, these curses written of in Deuteronomy 28 shall be upon the Israelites for a sign. What does that speed limit sign tell you, brother? That one right there. What does that tell you to do? To go that speed limit, right? So when we read these scriptures and saying that it says that only the nation of Israel went into slavery on cargo slave ships, what's that telling you? Absolutely. Read the scripture. I'm asking it again, all right? And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So these curses shall be upon us for a sign. And for a wonder. Uh -huh. And upon thy seed forever. And upon the Israelites forever. My question to you was just how you see that sign and it tells you to go 25 miles per hour. When we read these scriptures showing that the nation of Israel was the only nation to go into slavery on slave ships, what is that telling you? <laughs> uh-huh, so who was the book of Deuteronomy written to? So that means you have to be from what nation? Exactly. You see that? You see that, right? He asked me earlier about my background, where I'm from. Right. I see what you're saying. So, am I saying that, or did the Bible just say that? The Bible. The Bible just said that. So my question is, brother, what, what, what is your nationality? Now, I want to see if you can answer this right. What is your nationality? From what, what, what tribe? Look on this sign. From the tribe of Judah. Now let me read this scripture again. Hebrews 7 and 14. Now let me read it again for you. Now I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you before. Alright? Read that. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. That Christ sprang out of what? That our Lord sprang out of Judah. Brother, what importance does that have to you? That Jesus Christ sprang out the same tribe as you. What importance does that mean? That he's on our side. That he's for us. That he's for us. What else? Um, that, God is like us. that God is like us, right? So our women shouldn't be straightening their hair, right? Our women shouldn't be ashamed to be the color that they are. They shouldn't be bleaching their skin. We should be proud that we look like the Most High in Christ. That's right. Right? right? Because we, you got that? In uh, Yeah, give me that. Give me that. I almost forget that one. Listen to this. That's in the wisdom song. Yeah. There's a good scripture right here. Because the Most High God, he set the standard of beauty how we should look, right? But it's because of these other nations, and in this captivity it happens to be because of white man, they set a standard of what looks good and what's ugly. They say everything white is good and pure. Everything black is horrible and evil, right? Great. Listen to this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 and verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be God. Let them know how much better the Lord of this. God is the first author of beauty. That's right. So we read what Christ looked like, right? Let's read what God looked like. Give me Daniel 79. Bring it out. All right, because God looked just like his son. Christ said, when you see me, you seen the Father. You understand that, right? Listen to this. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who sat? And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is referring to the Most High. All right? Because he has no beginning nor end. He's the Ancient of Days. Read on. Whose garment was white as snow. Uh-huh. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. The hair of his head was like what? Like the pure wool. Didn't Christ have hair like that? Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. Why am I showing you these scriptures? Why do you think I'm showing you this stuff? So I can know, so I can know more about my history. 
brought your heritage because it was stolen from us, right? Give me that. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. So this is going into not just Christ, not just the Mosiah. This is showing you what the whole tribe of Judah looked like. Give me that. Judah murdered uh -huh. and the gates thereof like. Read. They are black unto the ground. What color are they? They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. The Bible says that, right? But you'll never hear this in your Christian churches. Why do you think you will never hear this in your Christian churches? Who taught us Christianity? The white man is common sense, right? Is this is this racism or is this thus saith the Lord? Why do you think we out here trying to give you the sense to wake up? You're not the same as a white man. You're an Israelite. And I'm trying to teach you your true heritage, that you have certain laws and holidays that you're supposed to be celebrating. You're not supposed to be celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, birthdays. That's not in the Bible. That's right. That's what they taught you. Right. Give me Isaiah 29 and 13. I'm going to show you that, because you hit it right on the head. We learn everything from our slave owners. Give me that. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. That's our people, brother. It says that our people have removed our hearts far from God. Right? So you know all that carrying on and so-called speaking in tongues in the Christian church like they love God? That's all taught, and I'm going to show you that. That was all taught to us, read. And their fear toward me. And the way we fear God, right? Read. Is taught by the precepts of men. Taught by who? Is taught by the precepts of men. You just said it. What type of man taught us that? You just said it. You just said it early. And I'm just, I just went to the scripture to show you what you said was true. What type of man taught us everything we know? All right, listen to the scripture. I'm going to show you that, that you, what you just said is in the Bible. Read it again. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. So this people is referring to us, the Israelites. So we draw to God with lip service. We talk big, oh, I love God. But we in a club on Saturday and church on Sunday, right? Read. And with their hearts and with their lips do honor. Read. But have removed their heart far from me. Uh -huh. And their fear toward me is taught. And the fear towards God, read, is taught by the precepts of men. It's taught by the precepts of men. What's going on, brother? All right? So, you taught, you just told me we learn everything from what man? And that's backed up in this Bible. Give me Proverbs 3 and 31. Go to Proverbs 3 and 31, man. We are here teaching our true nationality, bro. If you take a look at this sign and look at that fly, you'll get caught up. Give me that. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. And be thou not the oppressor. It says, envy thou not the oppressor. Read. And choose none of his ways. So let me ask you again. Who is our oppressor here in, um, in America? Who is that? The white man. Read it again. And choose none of his ways. Read it again from the top. Envy thou not the oppressor. Envy. What does it mean to envy? Be jealous of because you want it, right? So the Bible just said, envy thou not the oppressor. So it says, just because you're in captivity, and I'll, I'm allowing them to rule over you, do not want the things that they want. That's what it says, right? All right, give me Leviticus 18. Because in Leviticus 11 and 7, God put us, I'm sorry, Exodus 11 and 7, God put us separate from the Egyptians, right? He said, I have to make a difference. And I'm going to show you in detail why he had to do that. Give me that. Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. I'm sorry, uh, Leviticus 18. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel. So that's what we out here doing, bro. We speaking unto you. You are the children of Israel. Read. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein you dwell. So it says, For after the doings of the land of Egypt which you dwell, read. Shall ye not do. Shall you what? Shall you not do. Give me uh, Jeremiah 10 and 2. So it says, just because you dwell in Egypt, you're not supposed to do the things that the Egyptians do. Right? Give me that. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2. Uh-huh. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Did you read verse 1? I'm sorry. Verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So once again, we're speaking this. The Most High God is speaking this to who? The children of Israel. Read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. 
So the first one says, don't learn after the Egyptians. They're heathens. But then in this scripture, he says, don't learn after any other heathens, right? So let me teach you some laws, right? Because I'm going to show love to you according to this Bible. Give me um, Numbers 15, 38, right? So I'm going to teach you how not to live after the Americans. Because believe it or not, right? What, what day is the Sabbath day, as a matter of fact? What day is the Sabbath day? Do you even know what that is? A little bit. I know kind of. Not really. What you know about it? You say kind of. What do you know about Sabbath day? Well, I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing? Appreciate your honesty. All right? I'm going to show you something that's very important. All right, I'm going to show you the importance of the Sabbath day. Give me that. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Keep what day? Shall keep the Sabbath. Read on. To observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. Uh -huh. For a perpetual covenant. For what? For a perpetual covenant. Brother, do you know what perpetual means? Perpetual means forever. It means ongoing, never ending, right? Read. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. So that's how important the Sabbath day is, right? Now, the reason why you didn't know what the Sabbath day is, is because everything you know has been taught to you by who? The white man. So we're going to let an Israelite brother teach you how to keep the Sabbath day. Give me Exodus 20 and 8. All right? This is very important. I know it's hot, right? I know it's hot. I'm sweating. Who cares? Right? Because you'd rather make the kingdom than be put to death, right? That's because right. you know if you don't keep God's commandments, you're going to get put to death. That's you know right. that? All right. You know that. All praise. Give me that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the seventh day to keep it whole. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. So what day is the Sabbath? Sunday. Seventh day. Really? Monday. Bro. What's the first day of the week? First day of the week. To me it's Monday. But... Hold on, hold on. What's, what, look at the calendar. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Right. That's, that's universe. That's everywhere. Why is that though? Why do you think Monday is the first day of the week? Daniel 7 25. Why do you think that? Because the white man says that that's right because he says the weekend is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then your week starts Monday. But look at the calendar. The calendar says Sunday, Monday. It says Sunday is the first day. You see that, right? And I'm going to show you where it says that in the Bible. Give me that. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high. That he is Esau, the so-called white man. Read. And we are the saints of the most high. We are the saints of the most high. All right? We are the Israelites. Read. And think to change times and law. Think to change what? And think to change times and law. And that's what he's done that because you just told me that Monday was the first day. So he has, he has changed times and laws. Well, on the calendar, Sunday is the first week, but we can't even think that because Esau told us Monday was the first day of the week. You see that? Give me uh, Exodus 28 again. 20 and 8. So, what day is the Sabbath? I mean, Sunday. What day is the Sabbath? Read Exodus 20 and 8. Read, read this. Listen to this. Listen I'm to this. Listening, Are you confused? I know why you're confused. Listen to this. Make it real simple, all right? Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it whole. Six days! Six days. Could you count me six days? What's the first day of the week? What's the first day of the week? Count it. You got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's six days, right? Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What day is the Sabbath day? Saturday. All praise to the Most High. You see that, right? That's very important. Now, could you give me Judith 5 and 20? Now I'm going to show you the importance, brother. Because you think that our enemies don't know that for you not knowing the Sabbath day, that's not a benefit to them? They know that because if you don't know God's laws, right, they'll continue to reign over us. Now once you repent and your brothers and sisters repent and come back to our true nationality, their reign is over. That's when we're going to get dominion back over this earth. That's right. All right? Listen to this scripture. Judah chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. So, if there be any error in the Israelites, right? Read. And they sin against their God. Like we're doing right now. Like you didn't know the Sabbath day. If we continue to sin against our God, read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. 
We are ruined. This is our ruin because our people are not keeping God's laws, right? That's why we're getting gunned down. That's why we are welfare. That's why we're beneath all the other nations in America, right? Flip side, though, listen up. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Uh-huh. But! But, there's always a but. So there's one side of it, we'll be on the bottom if we don't keep God's laws free. But, if there be no iniquity in their nation. So, do you know what iniquity is? Iniquity is sin. That's what it's talking about. So it's saying, if there be no sin in their nation, read it again. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Let their Lord defend them and their God be for them. You see that? So if we keep God's commandments, just like you said, Christ and the Most High, they're going to be for it. But as long as we continue to sin, as long as it continue to smoke, get drunk, be a whoremonger, women dressing out of order, going to the club, as long as we keep doing that, we will continue to be put to death. That's right. But once you wake up and repent, things are going to change around. Hello, this I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.